Welcome to Meet the Artist. My name is Keisha Willingham, and we are in Slow Gallery today in downtown San Luis Obispo, California. So if you're local or around, please stop by and come check out the artist. We are, how do you say your last name, Jewel? Damas. Damas. Okay, yes. so this is Jewel Damas. She is one of the artists here. She has her stuff here. Please come by. Um, please. So tell me about uh, the beginning of your art journey. Well, the beginning of my art journey, like a lot of individuals that who worked full time, my journey started when I was young and taking art classes before I had a career. Once the career came along, then art was sacrificed, unfortunately, and I'm not, I know I'm not the only one that that happens to. But once I retired, then I could start over, and what I found to be a lot of fun was then I also had time to experiment. So, twice. Yes, so I started out with watercolor, which I have since given up. It's too hard, <laughs> actually. I did some very nice watercolors, but. It's challenging. It's cha you can't make a mistake. No. Especially if you use the stain. Anyway. Fair enough. So, <laughs> then, so then I went to acrylics, and then a friend, because I lived up by Mount Shasta. Okay. In any case, uh, there was a workshop in Mendocino. What did, I mean, who, who, could, right? <laughs> who could ask for a better place to take no a workshop? Doubt. So uh, it was on mixed media. Okay. And it, abstracts, basically, not a lot of instruction, just instruction in terms of how you can put it together, but nothing about what it should look like. Right. So we all just did our own thing. Wow. And it was so much fun, and I will honestly say, and I'm not being modest, I did some great work. Nice. And anyway, that, then I fell in love with mixed media. Mm -hmm. So I now work back and forth acrylics and mixed media. Although, just to keep myself busy, I have also started playing with clay. Nice. Yes, yes. And my problem with clay is I actually have sculpted a... I love her, oh, a woman, because okay. um, I like women. <laughs> I like the female right. form, which yeah. is why I, I do figurative work in any case. Uh, but I haven't been able to touch her because I don't really know how to glaze. She's been bisque, she's ready okay. to go, she's ready to be glazed. But unlike painting, I'm afraid to touch the glaze to oh. the clay. So because well, then it's permanent. <laughs> That's a problem. I, I can't just paint over, over it. it. <laughs> right. So I'm I a can chicken. see the fear here. I, <laughs> I'm like, I'm oh, a, I'm feeling that. I'm like, oh, yeah. yeah like, I'm a chicken. You, uh huh. Because you love her. I love as her. She is. Yes, mm. I do. I love her, and I don't want to mess her up. Although I keep trying to convince myself that I could do it again, and the second time she might probably would turn Be out better, better. I would imagine. But. Right, but. Mm. Like, that's your baby. I know. I, I, have, I have a friend in Mount Shasta who works with clay. And she, they, in fact, they've got a, uh, I think it's Ashland that they've got a sh show. And anyways, she said if I send her the image of the piece that she'll give me some ideas. Oh, about, which would be helpful. And which would could. be helpful. Oh, nice. But then I have to go out and buy the glaze. Right, or you go visit her and use her Well, that space. was the other idea. Right. In fact, I think that's that, what I I'm going to do. Yeah, I and think I love. Yes, I just got back from a road trip. I was up there. That's when I was talking with her. And so she said, Bring it. Bring it. Do some more. Bring, Bring them up. all. Oh, see, that's great. I know. Yeah. I know. I can use her glaze. Yeah. So I don't have yeah. to buy glaze yeah. and I may never, never use and it. And you can just try. Like, I can that's just, the opportunity exactly. just to try. Yes. I love that. Yes, I, I love that. Too. I think that that's a huge benefit in, um, I don't know, having friends that are artists as yes. well, right? It's like, yes. well, you do this, I do this. Can I yes. try that? I just want to hang out, you know? Yeah. Like, I don't want to buy a kiln. Right. Right? right. I don't want right. to do that. Right. Um, but I would love to do some play. I would love to do, yes. you know. Yes. Because um, I sculpt. That's my primary. What do you use to sculpt? Are you clay? Are you stone? Are you metal? Are you... Uh, my primary wood? Um, uh, medium currently is uh, fiberglass and cement. Oh, that sounds yeah. interesting. So it, it definitely creates a different look. 
and then I do sculpt in um, paper and um, and I usually finish that off in like a clear resin so that it's solid and I'd hard. I'd love to see your work. It sounds really interesting. Thanks. I'll show you some of okay. done. But yeah, okay. All right. Yeah. Um, but so, but I love that, right? So, but I paint with acrylic. I, I, I try watercolor, but I'm like you. I'm like, I don't know. I bring watercolor. <laughs> every time I come to the coast, I bring watercolor with me because it's small and compact and I can carry it with me. And, um, and I, it is scary to me. Like it's intimidating. Well, it's interesting <laughs> with watercolor because I have done that. I take my little packet with me if I'm on a trip, yeah, uh, the train, whatever, yeah. And they have to be quick, yeah. And so sometimes when I transfer mm. or put my translation on it on canvas on acrylic, it's not nearly as loose and it's not nearly as nice. Right. Right. So yeah. So, I know. <laughs> so sometimes watercolor, actually. I mean, if you're doing something quick. Right. But, but yeah, to it's create a big painting and get that stain in the wrong place and not be able to lift it. I would like to, I would like to get better at it. I don't need to be a watercolor artist, right? Like, I don't need to do that. But I would like to be more confident, maybe, in, yeah. in, in using it. Because I think that it has some good tools and some good kind of opportunities that other mediums don't offer. They're you know? bright. Yeah. Well, and, and, I, and I love that you can go from this, like you can be very intentional about yes. what you're doing. And you can just, or you can splat yeah. it. Or, or you can be very soft, I know. right? So I think that I love yeah. that it has like lots of different um, opportunities. I agree. So I do a lot of stuff in alcohol ink, and I feel the, the same about oh. that. Although I feel like alcohol ink, I can be like, I am not trying to do anything in particular. I, I let it be the boss of me, and I just move it around, and then I'm like, okay, I'm done. Like, <laughs> I'm like, yes, I've completed it, or, or I'll get inspired with a word. Like, I get oftentimes a word that I see, and then, then the need or the pull is to make somebody feel that hmm. in that piece. Huh. And so, That's interesting. What so, a... What a good journey that would be. It, I, I, well, I just, I, I mean, sometimes it's just like, I, sometimes I just need something to do that I can do quickly that's not, doesn't take a lot of space, doesn't take a lot of equipment, doesn't want, take a lot of right. stuff, you know, because a lot of my sculptures are big, so I can't just I have to put them in the car, <laughs> yeah. right, and, and take them with me and continue to work on them there. So, um, but yeah, so how do you get inspired? Well, actually, um, I get inspired in my own head most of the time. Okay. What does that sound like? Well, okay. that sounds like uh, it might be an experience of mine. It might be an experience of someone else's. But I like to tell stories. Oh, yeah. And so that story could, have, it could be my story or it could be someone else's story. And I like painting figurative because once again I mean that's women I can relate to okay, and okay, their yeah. stories I can sure. relate to and so most of what I do is figurative abstract abstract sorry, figurative gotcha. not realism not realism by any stretch of the imagination and then I have been playing with abstract abstract is hard why do you think it's hard I think it's hard because you know, with figurative, even though it's abstract figurative, I've got a thing that I'm starting with. Fair. With abstract, straight abstract, I am starting with just my own <laughs> empty mind. I mean, literally, you, could, you, got, you just got to put well, something yes, on the page, right? Yes. Like, you just got to put something on the canvas and then go, okay, now I can work from here. <laughs> and that is exactly what, so, I mean, I... Someone once said, "Well, start with a certain palette." So, and I've got certain oh, that's palettes, too, right? Right. So I've got, and I've got certain palettes that I really like. But still, within the palette, you've got to have some vision about where those colors are going to go in relation to 
those colors somewhere else in the painting. And I just, I mean, I'm not going to, I, okay, fair. Well, yeah. I will say, you know, I am happy with m most of the abstracts that I have done, but I am, but, but it doesn't come as easily because I'm not telling a story that I, that is dear to my heart or that I'm familiar with. Okay. I'm not at all familiar with abstract other than I like looking at it. Right. Hmm. I wonder if abstract artists specifically, I'm trying to think of a few that I've um, interviewed, if they are telling a story, if their perspective is telling a story. And they may be. Yeah, yeah, because I mean it's, it's really telling a story is it's all in how the expression of the story, right? Right. So, so for somebody who is predominantly abstract artist, then the story is always going to be abstract, right? The story is always going to come right. out in an abstract right. way. But right. there's still for the artist, there's still right. a story there. Yes. So, um, gosh, my story. So everybody's just a unique storyteller. Right. My story comes after the painting is done. Really. Yes. Really. Yes. Tell me about that. Well, so when after I, when I've completed an abstract painting, then I see. Oh, yes. Whereas I don't s s start with an idea; right. I end, end up, up with, with something it. that mm -hmm. actually it turns That's out has actually, meaning. Right, actually has yes. a story. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's funny because what? I feel like art has a story. Every piece of yes. art has. I mean, there is a story. Yes. In it, and yes. so. Whether you're starting out with the story right. or not, the art will tell you. It may not be intentional. You, yeah, the art will tell you a story. Right. I hope. We hope. I hope. Well, it's going it to does. tell a story. It, it might not be a good story. <laughs> oh, I know. <laughs> I mean, yeah. It might. It's, I mean, who knows? I. But there will be a story there. Yeah. 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 There is, even if I have to make it up. <laughs> oh yeah, for sure. Absolutely. Or somebody else, right? It's all oh, that's somebody true. Else sees it, yes. And yes. it says this tells yes. them a story, yes. and you're like. Yes. Okay, well, good. Yes. Now that piece has a yes. story. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's awesome. Yeah. So what's your current favorite medium? So I know you're working in some play now, which is like new and different, but are you pro you're primarily, you mixed media. So in your mixed media, what all are you using? Well, I use, um, I have some handmade paper that I made once upon a time. In fact, and I'm going to make some more, I hope, in the ne this coming year. So I use paper. It, uh, you know, it can be gunny sack. It can be... Right, yeah. In fact, I used in one of my pieces, TiVo. Oh, yeah. And TiVo, which I didn't know before somebody told me that it did this. If you take a heat gun to it, then it... Crinkles up. <laughs> it makes does these, magical stuff. It does magical stuff, and it makes these absolutely interesting... Textures. It, yes, that, you know, and cardboard. I mean, yes, right. there's all sorts of stuff out there that you can throw on a canvas Absolutely. and get going. That's so fun. Um, what, do you have any advice for, like, artists? Like, it could be a new artist or just, like, you know, speaking maybe to somebody who might be, like, struggling getting going. Hmm. Well, I would say don't be like me. Don't wait till don't you be retire. Afraid. Is that what you're <laughs> don't, saying? Don't wait till you retire. But also, but don't be afraid. Oh. I like. I mean, my be fearless. Yeah, fearless. I mean, I have people say to me, "We can't believe that you can't touch that woman that you created in clay, because we think of you as fearless." But it's not true. I am full of fear when it comes to even sometimes applying paint. And I know very well. It's like you know, coloring or cutting your hair. I mean, I know that. The paint can be covered over with other paint. Sure, sure, but I, I'm a, I happen to be a hairdresser, so like you tell you touched on a thing, and I'm like, oh, oh, no, no, like no, like the absolute thing you don't want to do is cover over it, right? Like we don't want to, you know. So, I'm, so I I feel that that level of fear, right? Which is like, yeah, but. Yeah. Right. right. Like I or, yes, I can cover over it, but like that's not the intention or purpose. Actually, in. right. And I would say one other thing because I'm really bad at it. When there are many times, too many times, when I look at something, I say, "Oh, I like that," and then I wake up the next morning, and think, "Well, maybe I should 
tweak it, do this or do that. And <laughs> you know where I'm going. <laughs> I, I absolutely do know where you're going with this. Yep. Ah, and the next thing I know, I, I don't like it any longer. Right. Then I'm trying to recapture what, <laughs> right, what I had. Right. And you're like, dang yeah. it. Why didn't I just leave yeah, it alone? Exactly. Yes. I think sometimes when, I, when I'm feeling that, one of the things that I'll do is I'll start another one. Right? Because maybe what, I don't really want to fix that. I just want to do something. Right. And you that have to set is it already aside. there. And I, yes. Right. So, yes. And if I still feel like I need to come back to it, then I can come back to it. Yes. But at least I got like the weirdness out somewhere yes. else. So. Yes. Yes. Um, but yeah. You're, you're better at that than I am. I don't, I don't know that I'm better at it. I try. Like, here's a technique, right? Like, hold deep breath. Hold it in for four seconds. Breathe it out. Like, it's just a technique. Actually, that's not a bad idea. You know, it's just a technique yeah. of, yeah. like, okay, you know, how can I, because I've done it enough to know right. I don't want to do that. So, right. what, how, how can it's I? It's frustrating. How can I intervene right. on myself? Yes. Right, screwing that up, right? That's a great yeah. idea. That's a good suggestion. I'll so. have to start trying that. Of course, I know myself. myself. Well, you have to put, you have to put it away. I have to put it away. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. I actually have to get in my car and go away because I'm not uh, good at putting stuff away. Mm. I'd have to go out. Go, go for a walk. Go, go for a walk. Do yeah. something. Yes. Yeah. And pretend so. that I, I, right. I don't even own it. Yeah. Fair. <laughs> I need to wipe that out of my brain. It needs to go away. Yeah, it doesn't usually work. Uh, but, no. But no. I know what I should do. Right. I just yeah. don't do it. Well. <laughs> I mean, and here's the deal. Like, the worst that can happen is that we screw it up. Yeah. We can always make another piece. It'll never be that piece again. Right. It will but never it, be that piece again. It'll maybe be the piece that was really supposed to be there. Right. Sometimes you know I have to I mean? white it out completely and start over. Yeah. Because I get stuck. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. When I get upset with myself, which is, this is why, and every art instructor says, learn when to stop. And that's a big one. Learn when to stop. And so I haven't gotten to the point where I can learn when to stop because I'm kind of... Painters should be... Uh, although I'm saying this about myself, and in fact, <laughs> I shouldn't because actually I like my work. But painters, I mean, I think art requires that you have some... Uh, freedom and that there's a looseness in your and I'm looseness is not probably the exact same word but or the word that I need but but there, there, there's a looseness and a relaxation you can't get uptight mm -hmm. and be able, well that's the problem you can't get uptight and be able to stop and I mm -hmm. tend to be a personality sort that is <laughs> Pretty um, stringent, strident, um, obsessive, uh, perfectionist, and those qualities don't usually go that well with so art. So type A is what I'm hearing, right? That's what I am. Okay. Yeah, I'm hearing type A. I'm hearing type A. And I can see how, uh, although I feel like most artists are perfectionists, yes. we just if that makes any sense. So we do, and I think maybe doing art is our desperate way of not to be a perfectionist, right? Because we have to know when to quit and we have to know when yes. to, like, yes. so it's a, yes. it's a taming of the artist, yes. right? Is that is art a good is way the to put that. Of the artist. Yes, yes, it yeah. is. So. And some people can be tamed and others can't. <laughs> right, and we have moments of it, right? We have moments oh, of being able to walk away and be absolutely. like, I am done, it is yes. complete, and yes. I'm fine with it. Yes. And then we have other times when we struggle, right. but, but that's the taming. Right, and sometimes right. I have to say so that, you know, when I think I might be done, but I think that I want to tweak it, I'm able most of the time now at least to catch myself before I ruin it. Okay. So. See? Yeah, it's just practice, so, right? Yes. You get to know yourself better. No, I think I know myself. <laughs> That's part of the might problem. Be the problem. <laughs> right. Yeah. That's great. Okay. So, advice. What was your advice for Curtis? Oh, so my advice, going back to what I was talking about in terms of myself, um, my advice to an artist is to take chances, mm -hmm. to not be afraid of varied medium media. In fact, I think working with different media is really helpful. Watercolor is good because watercolor really 
requires, allows you to be loose. Mm -hmm. if, if you let yourself forces loose, it. With, it forces it, yes. Yeah. And that looseness is really important when it comes to art. And the other thing that I would say is that I think that it's really important, once again, to learn to love what you do. And, and in loving what you know how to do, what you are doing, I think that you also learn better about how or when to stop. Mm. And because you have more of an, a, a relaxed attitude. I don't have a relaxed attitude towards my work, so be relaxed. <laughs> yeah, I, I, try to, I try to go with the feeling. Yeah. Right, so my stopping point is when the feeling is complete. Yes. Right, when I feel, yes. when, my, when my spirit feels complete, and then I'm like, okay. Well, that's Even interesting. Even if my brain right. wants to, right? Because I, when tweak I'm it. in, f for f figurative, because I'm trying to catch an emotion. And in fact, somebody right. was asking me about one that I um, had created that's in here. That I was trying to create an atmosphere. Okay. And and I mean, I knew what I wanted, and sometimes I, it takes me a while. To get that, to get the pose just right, and the so that when somebody looks at a piece, there it they they get an emotion. That is the most important thing to me is that you know when someone looks at my art, they there is it evokes something. Yeah, I that's my that's my my biggest artist statement is um, I I want you to feel right, right. You should feel right. Right. Like, right. If you're not feeling, right. I'm not doing the job. And I do art that is not even about feeling at all. It's more abstract and it doesn't have any relation to a feeling or anything but like that. But abstract does. But it does to somebody. Right. right. So I still, right. like, this purpose in that is, even though it's not coming from a feeling from me, it's actually, hope, but hopefully still evoking a feeling in somebody. Yes. So, yeah, that's still, like, the goal. The goal is to, yes. like, reach in. Yes. And Yes, Touch. and sometimes it's just the color that evokes Absolutely. that emotion. Mm -hmm. And I've done some abstracts, actually the ones that I've been most successful in selling, that are just simply black and white, or black, white, gray, and you know, ochre, which is actually one of my favorite colors. Right, yeah, pretty. And it's amazing what those colors say. Yes, yeah. I mean, and they're not, there's no red, there's, I mean, there's ochre, but the, oh, that's not a bright yellow. No. By any stretch of the imagination. No. But I loved painting them, and I felt good when I was painting them, and so I'm just guessing. It's probably not true, but I'm guessing that maybe somebody else senses that. Yeah. When I they look no, at I, it. No, I think so. I, I think so. I think that, that our DNA is right here. So yes. They, so yes. I, think, I think people feel us in our, yeah. in our art. Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's what we all go for. Yeah. <laughs> That's what we tell ourselves, anyways, to make us feel better. Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right, Joel. Thank you so much. Thank you. That this was, was fun. Lovely. I had a little good, yeah. good heart to heart with myself. Yeah. And you, and, and you helped. Good. I'm <laughs> glad. I think that um, I think it's always so valuable uh, the conversations we have with other artists.